Okay, I'm starting at the back because that's the way I off of the roof. Uh, but there's also another good reason to start here. This is the area where the water ponds and it's rained a few times and that's fine. It helps rinse the detergent off even more after power washing it. Uh, but I want to get this covered before any dirt starts to accumulate uh, in this area, in this low spot. So how I do this is I, right, they have a little gauge that you can measure. You want 11 mils of coating. Well, that turns out to be one gallon in a 10 by 10 area approximately so i fill up a this plastic bucket after drilling a series of holes but like three eighths inch holes in it and i drizzle the gallon that i need in a 10 by 10 area now this area is less than 10 by 10 but my roller here i get the thickest roller I can and I also like to like the microfiber roller I think Home Depot is the one that has that but it has it's white with the blue stripe um, but this first filling up the uh, the nap on the roller takes considerable because this I believe it's a three quarter inch uh, roller and uh, to use the little uh, to spread it out like I do saves a lot of labor going back and forth you essentially have the amount you need in the specified area now there's I heard other guys talk about a rule of thumb Oh, by the way, to, to get a 10 by 10 area, each of these seams, from seam to seam, that's three feet. And I know that this is 25 feet wide. So I can set up my gauge based on that. But I'm starting my first 10 by 10 in the center here. That's the most important part of this whole route. That's where water stands. And this material doesn't mind standing water. But I want to get this first. Could rain later today, but in four hours, roughly, it'll be it'll be good. Now, see that? I don't know if you can, but it looks like tree bark, and this is one of the signs that you have enough uh, material. And and, and to, if you want to take time to even it out even more then you would roll it at a diagonal but there is a lot of this is not rolling paint there is some force required to get this stuff moving back and forth but so that's my first area although it's six by 15 it's at about 90 square feet so that's close enough especially since my uh, my nap on the roller took quite a bit of that so here goes the second it's nice to keep it off the the handle and so I always pour from the same side of this bucket and let the handle flop down on that side and I do the same with this spreader bucket this is a like five quart it's just a little bit more so spreading it even in this 10 by 10 area one gallon now the next coating goes further so you might discover that the first coat uh, in order to get to get this bark kind of uh, thing 
you need so you can get creative with this so then there's still stuff in here you can't wait until it all drains out you'll be here for a long time so I set it down in the area my next area that I'll be doing and let the handle flop down to the side so most of the work now is actually already done just by gravity and the holes Now any, any seams that are open need to have the fabric. I forgot my sunglass. You have to have sunglass. It is such, it is not sunny, but if it was, it can nearly make you blind or it might, it might. I used to have glasses until I left them in Walmart that uh, would darken according to how bright it is and those were ideal and they would just get as dark as possible doing this I have a pair of I bought a pair of safety glasses knowing that and where do you think the safety glasses are on the lift not exactly So I painted the perimeter, I painted, coated, and in some places there's fabric, and some places I like this, I need to put fabric, but it's been sprinkling off and on in this weather pattern. So I want to get the feel down. I can always go back and cut in See, this gives you a sense of how much is on there is if you can pull it out into the next into the next few feet and I know I I got it on here heavy so you just do the math and spread it I, mean, I have a big pile there where I set the bucket now this is See, this is on a little thinner than that you can see that right because this this has a tree bark effect on it and this doesn't well now it does because I just drug some of the stuff that had there's a lot of gecko roof silicone in that and I just drug it back into here and you can now see that that is having the, the bark effect. And there's a big pile of it right here. So this material is now made by Firestone. Our Firestone bought Geico Western and Geico, I mean the, the same, it's made in the same fats, I suppose but it's now a Firestone, Firestone label on the, on the product. See the 50 year limited material. With the last roof coating you'll never ever need. Well, it doesn't say never. Withstands permanent ponding water. That's pretty good. They've been hemming a leak in in here and what happened is that tree hit that parapet wall it messed we you know from watching previous things anyway it messed up this roof and the insurance company paid to have this torn off and three ply put back down but uh, you know I asked I told the homeowner the three ply you'll get a 10 year warranty off of another torch down or off of another uh, another glue down SBS modified um, or we can coat it 
and go with Firestone's 50 year and for him that was that was a no-brainer I don't want to I hate it when these handles skip forward gunk now there was a skin on the top and it just went into this little bucket so that should well what I can do is when it goes to the bottom just dump it out on the roof did I ever tell you I hate heights I can't imagine how I became oh I know how I became a roofer is that's where the money is I took a philosophy course at the university state university man I put 60 hours a week into that course so that cost that was about a thirty thousand dollar cost course and then i look at how much money i mean i really like philosophy and i was looking at how much money my professors made and you you're i guess the way to talk about it is you gotta love it because unless you're writing some kind of amazing book and you can gather a following i suppose see now that stuff is up on the bottom i'll pour it out in a minute uh you're in the 60 to 100,000 range mostly around 70 and i know that those of you who are in construction know that you can do that in a month I mean <laughs> anyway I don't want to bad mouth anybody or any profession they're very very smart people when it comes to the written word and you know what Socrates said and Plato said actually you know Socrates never said anything or rather what he did say Plato wrote it down so Socrates didn't write anything his partner Plato did so you'll see where they talk about Plato's Socrates and then there's some discussion about you know how much poetic license Plato took with Socrates you know the the Socratic inquiry you know how much of that was Plato's deal nobody will know for sure so they know a lot about that stuff and you know what cons constitutes the truth uh, you know it's true if you believe it you're justified in believing it and it's true so, <laughs> it's kind of weird isn't it sounding JTB it's called justified true belief and <laughs> and it is Plato and Socrates who came up with the test for how you know something and that whole area is called epistemology the study of of knowledge now my problem with that is well actually let's talk about Gettier while you're watching me do this Gettier is this PhD student who came along and he was forced to write a paper he needed a paper to get his PhD and need to be published or and so he came up with this thing they now call the Gettier problem and I'll just tell you one not the one that was in the paper so the Gettier problem is there's a sheep in the field 
and the sheep herder sees a sheep in the field but actually what the sheep herder is looking at is a stone and the sheep is in the field but he's not looking at that he's looking at the stone so does the sheep herder have knowledge that the sheep is in the field well the, there is a sheep in the field but his knowledge is based on this stone that looks like a sheep so in the sheep herders world and his belief he's justified for believing it because he sees this stone that he doesn't know it's a stone it's true that there is a sheep in the field it's just behind a stone and he believes of course that there's a sheep in the field so it meets the test Socrates Plato's test of a justified true belief but <laughs> it's it brings up the question of do you really know something when you think you do you think there's a sheep in the field well it might not be in the field because it's just a stone and it just happens he just happened to be lucky that there was a sheep in the field but would we say that the sheep herder or whoever was in the field observing the stone saying oh yeah there's a sheep there now does he have knowledge not does he have knowledge that there's sheep in the field but does does that meet the test of knowing something even though what you know is true it's based on something that's not quite I don't know how you would say it but you get the idea from the gettier that's a get gettier's problem and so my deal is let's say you we finally figured it out what is 2600 years after Plato Socrates proposed the JTB thing and it was accepted that that was actually true for I don't know up until the 18 1900s I guess and when until Gettier wrote that problem wrote that uh, yeah the Gettier problem wrote that paper and then it started a bunch of a big bunch of papers being published a great conversation so I have to get this see that there's part of that skim in there I'm gonna tease that out so what difference does it make if you finally figured it out you would say oh yeah that's right nobody can really have knowledge because of all the Gettier problems or they say and eh, it doesn't matter it Plato's right and would you wake up into a different a different world if you really resolved what knowledge was see well that was um, that was five gallons
All right, I have my FLIR infrared camera here and I don't know if you can see this but it's saying that it's 153 degrees right in this well there's my foot so right at the end of my toe is 150 153 degrees out there in the white part it's 92 degrees here where I haven't coated it's 150 degrees and right now are we this right now the Sun is behind the clouds what I'm going to do is uh, frequently when it gets down to 70 or so at night there's dew on the roof and it it's difficult to dry it off of this white roof it takes a while so I'm going to do something different than I usually do I don't want water on this I don't want to fight be fighting moisture so I'm going to put the second coat on this low I put the roller in the frame and now is the time to make sure that this thing rolls freely uh, and is the Geico builds up here and you have to take a pocket knife a utility knife obviously and trim it off but you want this thing to spin if it's locked and then you put it in the goo in the uh, Keiko you're gonna have a problem I guess it, it's always a good idea to have some uh, disposable gloves and then you can grab it but if you make sure it spins before you put the Geico roof materials on it, that there's a number on the can W21B002920 209 this is a bu bucket I know that in this there's a 208 and a 211 now this number is uh, you use it to send it into the factory to get the warranty and you're supposed to be certified to get this warranty but I don't see how they can put on the can that it's warrantied for 50 years uh, I understand it it has some conditions like you have to put it on a certain 22 mil thickness uh, but the product is well, I don't understand why you need to have go through a course to get the warranty for the materials it's as though they're warranting the labor if they're training you so if you get trained then they're now going to give you a warranty for the materials um, that doesn't make sense um, so the material is either warrantied to be what's in the bucket or not and whether or not you put it on if you want to go to a training class that's fine but there's a charge and somehow they have that that charge connected to well there's stuff in this can they have that charge connected to and that training connected to the warranty but they aren't warranting the labor but they're going to want to train you in order to give you a warranty for the materials which is already stated that it is a product that's warranted for 50 years so I don't know what the training does uh, you know I could I see you could use it as an advertising thing and say that you're warranted but then you send in this paperwork and they send you a warranty and you need to be I mean I am certified but I don't understand 
really the purpose of the certification other than you can say oh the company train I'm trained and certified but that doesn't necessarily mean that the company's going to stand behind your labor for 50 years they're still only warranting the product so that's a little confusing uh, to me I go all the way to the bottom. Obviously you wanna drag the solids, the pigments goes to the bottom. I think it's a uniform product, except for the pigment separates out. That's about all it takes with this, with a half inch drill and uh, So I just set it down, and then before it hardens, kind of smooth it out, that I'm going to do. And this first section, see so y'all come see that. You need to make sure that that is either covered or taped, that it covers. You can't leave gaps we can't leave gaps so this first gallon a lot of it will be soaked up into the all right I'm going to set this buck this bucket here on the other corner of the field that we're going to do now I ended one of the videos and the GoPro timer went off about I was doing a a roof that was about 30 times this size and what we did we had three guys and I was the guy and all I did is operate I put the material down I drizzled it out and I did it in a 10 by 10 area each gallon in a 10 by 10 area and while that guy was spreading it out I went over and spread out the next guys 10 by 10 area and just went back and forth and as fast as I could drizzle it out that's about how long well I had some wait time I guess you gotta have a little breather can't be running from one to the other all day long on these super hot roofs I bought my sunglasses see how there's that the tree bark effect I've never had a callback on one of these except for where I did my own roof and I put one thin layer on top of some dirt to hurry up and fix something from a from a five gallon that I had left over and there is the Geico also has a uh, product that you can use underwater and it's uh, I think it's called Geico patch so if you want to get out there in the rain and patch something you can there is a kind of waterproof version of this it doesn't come in five gallons it's a much smaller I can see I need to kind of go over the edge a little better. So this will be exciting that I won't have to worry about drying out this ponding area.
I need to get that middle a little a little better because I went around the edges and then ran out of ran out of juice so you, you've probably noticed by now that I don't put a lot of effort effort in the production to make sure see scrape this into that gap and then I'll come back and see if that seals it what you see is actually how I do it I do very little if mostly none staging like running around and making it look pretty so that you'll be impressed by my presentation I just want to leave you with a normal day's work here hey I'm cutting in or I mean I'm making my uh, pass that gives me a chance to roll straight into the wall because as I'm going up this way see the roller doesn't go up the wall so well doing it like this now in here you'll see I have some some fabrics some gecko fabric not there or it wouldn't do that and you won't be able to tell that it's under there and it'll look seamless um, as I mentioned that area there and a bunch of other areas need to be done and they'll actually end up being better than if I would have gone and cut it in because they will effectively have about four thicknesses uh, on it after I put the fabric I'll need to go over it again but I wanted to get at least one coat on um, since it's going to rain and there is some areas that pond up in here like right there a little bit of water sets and one of the things to be careful of is when you're using a wide roller it wants to skip over one of the most critical parts and leave it shallow so if you use a nine inch roller you have less to deal with because it goes into it doesn't tend to bridge like this 18 inch uh, roller cover is it 18 or 20 yeah, I think it's 18 anyway the wider roller covers will tend to want to bridge the low spots and that's exactly what we don't want you can see the black through that now that could also be and I know I'm putting it on the right rate but that could also be that the roof is so hot the petroleum distillate is dissolving the asphalt and that's what we're seeing is the dissolved asphalt at any rate we're going to put on the required amount so that we end up with the required thickness and I don't mind if the asphalt dissolves into the first layer I think that's actually part of the engineering part of the great part about this roof but you can see that and I think it has to do with the heat it has the right rate and we're gonna make sure that it has enough for the next coat as well so one of the things that I do see I'm not sure that I'm helping anything it's kind of making it go away is I cross roller it once I go one way I I get it on a 45 and go the other way see these light spots now I'm making it go away but 
I'm not so sure that's a good thing. I'm just making the, the roof stand up a little more, like change the texture. And, uh, and that may not be benefiting the situation. Let's see, even where I was really thick over here, you can see that, you can see that happening. So I'm, I'm taking the case that it's the uh, asphalt dissolving into the petroleum distillates that's in this, and I'm not gonna worry about it. I've seen that happen before. I think it has to do with the heat. So now we're just going to be closing in this, this circle that I've created and painting myself up the lift. I have bought six five gallons and this is the fourth. So I have this one and another one in reserve. Technically, five of them would give me the coverage that I need. But I bought another one just for insurance. And also, I hope I have some left over for my warehouse roof. I keep doing sections. It's a 10,000 square foot roof. And if you do the math, that's a bit of change for just the materials. So I take it, you know, a square square two at a time and I've gotten about 25% of it done every job gets as much as five gallons and I get to experiment with okay let's put it over dirt and see how it likes that and uh, vary the thickness and clean it and don't clean it just to explore the limits of what this is. I mean, if you do it right, it's 50 years, but gee, if I do it wrong and I get 25 years, I could be way ahead of the game and you can always put other coats on. It's not limited to how many coats you can put on. In fact, you can't put anything else but itself on it. So, it's better to not have a leaking roof and only have it last 25 years. But if you can see from, as it drains down, there's less pressure. And so the little threads get smaller. And I've had these threads you know, on a windy day blow and so then you have to get it really close to the roof so that doesn't happen <laughs> from the roof where I'm standing has been too coated but I'm running up to that area spreading the very very last bit I had enough for an extra 300 square feet but it all went on the roof that closes out that flat roof coating. 